Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of BBC's Leadership Throughout the Pandemic. My name is Cristina Torres. Today, Norway's handling of the pandemic. With fatality rates at around 600 since March 2020 and 96,000 cases overall, it can be said that Norway has handled the pandemic with great leadership. But has it really? Let's find out. I have invited a few guests for our report today. Welcome, Andrea, an expert and historian on leadership styles who has been studying Norway's leadership and pandemic response. We have also a mental health expert with us today. Welcome, Stella. And Sophie, a concerned citizen all the way from Norway, will be joining us and sharing her first-hand experience, a real taste from the followers' perspective. And last but not least, we have Leon, a leadership expert trained by Melanie Eusebi and her world-renowned leadership curse. Andrea, hello. Walk us through Norway and their leadership response. What happened initially and why was Norway so successful? Hello, Christina, and thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. First of all, I will say that the main leadership figures under the COVID-19 response in Norway is the Prime Minister Anna Solberg, as well as the Norwegian government. Initially in the pandemic, Norway was quick to announce countrywide lockdowns and close educational institutions, ban sports and cultural activities. So Erna Solberg uh, emerged as, as the leader, very much coming from an authentic and concerned leadership approach, taking on the role of the mama bear and rallying the troops. What's important to note is that the most important response of Solberg has challenged Norway's long-standing culture of full democracy. This has really changed how leadership is seen and felt in Norway. Yes, of course. What was the Prime Minister's main approach? What were her objectives? Well, I will say that the Norwegian government had two agendas in order to tackle the pandemic initially. The first point was a policy response to the changes required. The second point was uh, to limit the disease and interact with the public. While the third point was to mitigate economic effects and begin to engage with social consequences. Uh, from a leadership perspective, the initial theory used was, was the situational leadership approach, as the Prime Minister had a clear sense of direction and had, had to balance the task behavior with, with the relationship behavior. So the situational leadership approach was the most appropriate to tackle the situation and to influence external and internal factors in order to cater the economical, social and political aspects in Norway. Going forward, I think that it's vital for the government and Prime Minister to keep in mind that each verbal and non-verbal communication transmits emotions and shapes public perception. Thank you, Andrea. Hi, Sophie. We know the government was successful generally, but how has their leadership affected you? To be honest, the last year has been like a roller coaster. I got laid off in March last year, and as an employee, the government used three months to pay me out. I have bills to pay and I need money to buy food and provide for my youngest child. As a solar provider, this has been tough. Correct. That's, that's because you have a system in Norway that is supposed to protect you if you are out of work or are struggling in other ways, right? Yeah, that is correct. We have a government protection system that is called NAV. However, what is the point of having such a system if the system is not working properly? Makes total sense. From what I've understood, you have friends who are part of the native minority, is that correct? Yes, my friends, for example, are a part of the native minority in Norway. As not being a native minority myself, I felt that the government made more efforts to speak to my demographics, but failed to consider every citizen. According to the leadership member exchange theory, you felt that your friends were part of the outgroup? Yeah, exactly. The government did make a strong enough effort to interact and work for their needs as well. And another point, my 20-year-old daughter, who is a student at the university, was also laid off. And during the first half year, there was no support system for her. I was highly concerned about how she would get through the pandemic. I mean, this has all really affected our mental health and also for the most vulnerable. Also, by staying in lockdown, that hasn't helped, helped much. My goddaughter sadly committed suicide right before summer. I'm so sorry to hear that. Thank you. Okay. 
Stella, welcome. As an expert on mental health, can you say something about how the pandemic has affected the mental health of the population in Norway overall, and also for individuals such as Sophie's goddaughter? Thank you, Christina. Well, from studies done, about three out of 10 Norwegians are likely to suffer from mental health issues such as depression and anxiety. To further explore that, my colleagues and I conducted a survey to get perspective on the leadership handling of Norway, as well as to see how the mental health of the Norwegian population was actually affected. From our findings, 36 out of 55 participants reported a higher level of mental health struggles since the beginning of the pandemic and about 78% of the total participants said that they had received no support with regards to their mental health from the government. In addition, there were comments saying that the government put out reports that said that it was an issue and that they understand, but have done nothing further to help the population. This brings an overall concern on the leadership of the Norwegian government with regards to their followers. As I took some management and leadership courses myself, I believe that there needs to be a swift change in leadership style with regards to the population and their mental health. Perhaps use elements of servant leadership where the followers are the main focus and priority and the purpose of the leader is to serve the population. Thank you, Stella. What possible solutions and initiatives should the leadership focus on? Do you see any potential objections to your plan? I believe that one effective thing to implement would be supportive groups. These groups can help people cope, but also socialize with other people while they have waiting periods with their doctors. Support groups have been proved effective because they give people the level of empathy, support, and positive feelings that they need, especially in times of COVID. If Norway takes inspiration from the UK's initiative of Every Mind Matters, they can have a separate website that is purely dedicated to mental health. Anyone can access it and read about different mental health issues. This can take away the element of not knowing what you have and also how severe it is. In addition, you can receive tips on tackling the area of mental health that you're dealing with. In case someone needs immediate help, they can request for that directly through the website. One objection would be the time of which this can actually be implemented. Many countries tackled the mental health struggles at the beginning of the pandemic. There are more people now that need help, so it might be harder for the government to execute this quickly. Thanks for providing our viewers with this vital information. Leon, from a leadership position, do you agree with Stella's overall points? As a leadership coach and expert, what should be done? Thank you. So I agree with Stella's overall point. Uh, in our survey, around 42% of respondents stated that they are very dissatisfied and unsatisfied with Norway's handling of the pandemic. It's clear that whatever was done could have been done better. And ultimately, I believe it comes down to leadership's involvement with followers and servant leadership. Now we know when pandemics happen, leaders focus on coming up with a strategy and response and often place the followers' needs second. Communication and involvement is key. And I believe that if the government would have used the path goal leadership approach and focused more on participative leadership behavior, followers would feel more involved and part of the decision-making process. Do you agree with Leon's point? Yes, absolutely. These are great suggestions. Now, Leon, let's shift. The future of Norway. What can you say about that? So I see that from two perspectives. The first one is leadership up until the end of the pandemic. And for that, let's look back. So what we saw is that Norway's leadership treated the population as a whole, speaking to the whole country as a one. It works. But I think it would be interesting in future cases to split the population into subgroups and find messages and ways to engage with them. So a new level of personalized leadership, full of individualized consideration, which is a concept that I adapted from transformational leadership. Second, the future of Norway. So there's a real opportunity here to use transformational leadership to take the country and really rebuild it for the 21st century. And this could be done by raising the hopes and standards of living, by investing in the environment, putting people and nature first. This will also impact the future pandemics as it has been proven that climate change increases the likelihood of pandemics. 
Well, there, folks, I would like to thank all of our guest speakers for all the time and effort. And I hope our viewers have enjoyed this report. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you next time on Leadership Throughout the Pandemic.